It's the car you're driving, killing your financial goals. That is the conversation we want to have with you today because there's three areas in your budget that tend to be the biggest eaters of your budget, which is your car payments, your mortgage, and your groceries. Those usually are the biggest line items on your uh, um, budget. And so today we're going to talk about Becca's experience buying a brand new car for her husband and the sacrifices that they decided to make when they were deciding which car made the most sense for them, why they made those sacrifices, and then the three-month waiting period that they had to wait for the car to arrive and what that looked like for them and what they did while they were waiting because their first car was dead. They only had one car. I'm going to also share with you a few examples of how some other people have made their buying decisions with um, you know, getting that big, fat, beautiful SUV and making sure that that was the right decision for their family and how I decided myself to live as a family of six with just one car that did not fit our entire family for a season of our life and what went into that decision-making process. So what we want today is we don't want you to feel shame about the car payment that you have. Um, or how much your truck costs. But what we do think is that society in general needs a little reality check on buying a vehicle within your means. That means within your goals that you have um, and your financial situation, rather than being based on what, you know, Sally down the road is driving or what you think will look the coolest, which was one thing that I really put into one of the vehicles that I was looking at buying. Because cars are something that people tend to just justify to get what you want rather than what will actually make sense for you. And regardless of how it will truly affect your budget and your bottom line or your financial situation. And I'm going to share a little bit about my unique experience um, with vehicles and ownership that um, has really given me a unique perspective I have found on what it means to own a car and have car payments each month. So there's lots that we're going to dive into in today's episode. Becca, I want to hear your story about how you decided to buy the car you got for Mondo and what that looked like for you guys, how that decision was made, um, and how you guys survived with one vehicle with your family of four for a three-month period. We have talked about this on the podcast before sometime last year. Um, I'm gonna I'm going to repeat this story because I think it's really important that you hear, I love to hear how other people make decisions because it helps me change my view on how I might be making decisions, what I might not be thinking of, what I need to think of. And so I'm going to tell the story again and who knows what's going to come out this time. Please <laughs> but, do. Um, in August of 2023, uh, my husband was driving the car that I purchased and drove in my 20s. So it was like a little Mazda 3 he didn't need anything big. He was just going to and from work. I, in my car, I have the car seats for the kids and we just decided early on, we didn't need two sets of car seats. We would just like trade cars if we needed, if someone needed to take the kids somewhere. So he was driving my old Mazda three. I think at that time it was like, I want to say like 15 years old. Like we drove the wheels off of that thing. <laughs> and it, it happened suddenly. So we've taken care of this car. We've made sure that it's actually safe for him to drive. And then one Friday I get a call while I'm out with the kids. Um, I barely made it to work. My uh, transmission light came on and I don't know how I'm going to get home from work. And I was like, oh, shoot. My husband works overnight, you guys. So coming home in the middle of the night when no one else is on the road is like a little unnerving. So anyway, we got it taken care of. He borrowed his dad's car for, um, we had his car towed. We borrowed his dad's car for a couple of days while we thought we would be able to go buy a car, drive it off of the lot and come home like problem solved, right? No. <laughs> if you know anything about our family, a, a small problem can turn into a giant problem very quickly. Um, and now we just laugh about it. So we went to the dealership and he had in mind that he wanted this really nice truck, upgraded truck. I mean, we're in our late thirties, like we should be able to afford these things. I'm going to get this nice truck. And I was like, okay, well, let's just go see what that looks like. No, we are not doing that. Can we make it work? Yes. Will we have to pull back on several of our financial goals? 
Also, yes. Will we be able to take a vacation this summer? Heck no. <laughs> Will we be able to put the money that we want in savings if we get this truck? Definitely not. And also, we probably will have to pull a bunch out of savings to get this car payment down to something that we are comfortable with. Um, and so we went home that day kind of defeated and um, like, wow, we should be further along. We should be able to afford the truck that we want right now. And the more that we talked about it, the more it was like, why do we want this truck? Because it looks really nice because it it's looks, fun. Because it's fun to drive a truck like this. And I, I asked Mondo, I was like, why do you want a truck? And he was like, well, you know, to haul things. And I was like, well, we're not really a family that hauls things. We don't. <laughs> We haul our kids and that's it. And they're five and seven. They're not that big. We don't have a boat. We don't have a camper. We don't build things. So we're not hauling like construction equipment. And he was like, yeah, you're right. We don't need, like, I don't need a truck. I just want one because they look nice. And I was like, okay, well, what if, let's just throw out some options for ourselves. What if we chose a different car that is brand new, that is totally upgraded that costs less and we work hard to pay that off in the next year or two while we save for the truck that you want and go on vacation and save for our family. Like, would that feel better? He was like, yeah, I just want a new car. I've never had a new car. I've always driven people's like hand-me-down cars. <laughs> I felt bad for him, honestly. And so um, we looked at this car called um it's a chevy Trax, and it was brand new we didn't know this at the time but there was a wait list for these suckers because they are so inexpensive and they are so nice and you can get like the most upgraded one for less than thirty thousand dollars and they drive forever so anyway long story short we went back to the dealership the next day we put the down payment down for the tracks. And they were like, oh yeah, it's gonna, you're going to have a 30 day waiting period while they're shipped from, I think, Korea. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, 30 days, it's not a big deal. We have one car for him to go to work at night. I have to drive the kids to and from school. And we made it work for 30 days. We had one car two car seats and he took the car at night. I made sure that I didn't have things planned in the evening. If I did have them planned in the evening, I would call my mom or his parents and ask to borrow a car or could they drop us off? So like it really was not as big of an inconvenience as we thought it was going to be. And then month two came and then month three came and it was like, <laughs> okay, we're tired of this. Like it, we can make it work, but it's become more of an inconvenience than we thought it would be this long. So we were borrowing cars once in a while, um, or we were just rearranging our schedule to make it work while we waited for the car that made sense for our family. And finally, long story short, I will not tell you all of this story because it's crazy. You guys, cars being shipped overseas, like don't sign up for that. And I'm just gonna blanket statement. Don't, <laughs> don't put your name on a list. We ended up not getting the car that we paid for. We happened to go to the dealership because they were not returning our phone calls. And there was one sitting there and it was not claimed. It was not reserved. And we just purchased it on site because we were tired of waiting. It was the car that he wanted, but in a different color, a different style. And it's been the best decision we have ever made. He loves this car. He's like, it's like a little sports car for him. Um, and when we need to trade cars, we trade cars. It's not a big deal. I'm driving it today, actually. And he has the car that has the car seats in it. It was, it felt so good to make a decision that didn't have such negative consequences on the other side. Um, and we are going on vacation in a month. We're going to the beach with our whole family. We wouldn't have been able to do that. We, there's just so much that has happened that is good for making an adult mature decision that honestly we did not want to make. Um, but it's turned out to be amazing. Yeah. And there's so much, there's so much that I know that I can relate to. I'm sure everyone listening is relating to around how you made that decision, why you wanted the truck. Like we all do this. And this is what I mean by vehicles are just a, a necessary evil expense. You know, we need to move people 
we need something to get A to B. Um, and people just justify the one they want because they want it. And this is what we want to talk about. There is nothing wrong with buying the big, fat, fancy car if you can afford it, if it's in alignment with all the goals that you have so that you can both save, spend, pay off debt, and afford the vehicle that makes sense for you. So there's there's a time and a place. But most people, what we are seeing, like the without question, hands down, most people are buying vehicles that stretch them and then make money more stressful than it needs to be just so that they can drive the car that they want to drive because it looks cool because it's the one that they like. And it's just something that we really want to drive home to you. Like, is this really the best decision financially for your family? And is there a, a way in which, is there a world in which you could get a vehicle that would give you all the things that you really want on your wish list that doesn't have to cost what the big fancy one necessarily costs if that doesn't align with your goals? So I want to share with you a story. Someone in my family did buy the big fat fancy SUV and, um, you know, the King Ranch Expedition version. And for them, they were driving an SUV and they had a truck and they boat and they have a camper that they use all summer long. Like they really use it. They bought a brand new camper um, because this season of life, family time and these making these memories was really important to them. But only one of their vehicles could pull the camper and they also have a big bass boat. And so only one of the vehicles could really comfortably pull that bass boat. And so it was getting really inconvenient when they wanted to move all the people and all the things from the ho house to the campsite because they'd have to make two trips. And um, there was just a lot of inconvenience with the size of the SUV they had. They've got three kids. So getting to baseball tournaments and hockey tournaments was just really, really cramming them in there. And so for them in this season, they really wanted to have a vehicle that would fit the people and the stuff and be able to move the the toys. And so looking at those payments, yeah, it was going to cost more. But what they decided to do was look within their budget and find the money somewhere else that they were really willing to sacrifice and, you know, like the eating out category to be able to allocate towards the vehicle fund so that they didn't have to have more money coming out of their bottom line. They just reallocated their goals and priorities so that they could have the convenience of the vehicle that fit their family and their needs better and not have to cost more money out of, like I said, the bottom line. And so that's where we talk about sacrifice. They were willing to sacrifice a little bit more of the convenience of buying fast food more often um, and maybe shopping a little bit more on extras to be able to move that money towards the budget that made sense for the vehicle that would give their family the experiences and the memories while their kids are young that they really value in their family's value list of priorities. So um, that is how they were able to come to the conclusion that that purchase was the right one for them. Now, again, it doesn't mean that they have to drive this vehicle into the ground. It doesn't mean that they have to drive it for the next 10 years. Maybe it's the next five years or six years. Um, and so they can make a different decision based on their family when they have one less kid in the house in a few years, right? So that was, I thought, think, a really interesting conversation that, that um I was able to have with them to see what went into that decision and how did you come to that conclusion? So I mentioned that for me, I had a really unique experience with owning vehicles and car payments growing up. Um, I bought my first vehicle was a, a, what is it? A Honda CRV and it was beautiful and I loved it. And my next vehicle, I was fortunate enough to drive free cars throughout my entire, uh, all my twenties. And so I earned cars through my company that I worked for. And that meant I didn't have car payments. I just paid for gas and um, insurance was also covered. Uh, so it was really just the gas payments on an SUV. So I never really like grew up with a car payment. And the idea of buying a vehicle and having to have a car payment and an insurance payment and then the gas yeah. just like made my skin crawl. I was like, I don't know how I'm ever going to be able to buy a vehicle after living for 10 years without a car payment. and it really made me look at car payments differently because it felt like just simply throwing money out the window. Even though I know I got to move people, I got people to move. Mm -hmm. It still just did not sit well with me, the idea of buying a vehicle, but we have six people in our family. And so I, when I decided to, um, when I was looking at buying a car, so I had driven free cars. My last car was a Cadillac and I decided to leave that job and to start my own business. So I gave back my Cadillac and I went without a car for a season, probably like six months. I had no car. 
And I decided that that was the choice for our family because I work from home. I really only drive my son to and from daycare. The other kids are taking the bus and we have a, a truck. We have six people in our family. So we do fit in the truck with someone in the middle of the front, you know, and you pull up the center console. But I got teenagers. So like, that's not comfortable. And we're certainly not going on the highway like that. Mm -hmm. But we made it work for a season. And um, we, we just made it work. And when we had the, you know, a weekend where we needed to move everybody on a trip, like we were going out of town for the weekend, I was able to swap vehicles with my mom who had a minivan. And so she didn't mind at all. We'd give her our truck. We took, we would take her minivan and it really only happened a couple of times. So same thing. We were able to make it work. We didn't inconvenience anyone because she didn't mind. And worst case, we thought, well, we could rent a car every single month for way cheaper than owning a vehicle right now. You know, a vehicle is not an investment, right? Like you're not, it's not go an asset. It's a yep. detriment. So remember like spending money on Ubers or spending money on rentals is still cheaper than yep. owning a vehicle that I, that was going to rot in my driveway is really yeah. how I felt. And I remember when we decided to buy a vehicle, we bought my mother-in-law's uh, SUV that she was trading in. It was like an older one, maybe 10 or, or 15 years old. And I thought this is perfect because then the kids are starting to get their licenses. They'll be able to drive that. And we had it for a very short time. And then it got like stolen, like it got cut apart, like sawed open and someone stole all the parts, you know, and insurance was only going to give us what it was worth, but it wasn't really enough that we could buy another vehicle to replace it. Even that was kind of a similar value. The market just kind of was not great. And we decided again to go without that second vehicle for another season. And then we bought a business and it's a waste management business. And we bought an old um, 2010 Dodge Ram two door truck, which is now my truck. So I essentially went from driving a Cadillac to driving a grandpa truck. To a trash truck. A trash truck. A literal <laughs> trash truck that looks like a total grandpa truck. You know, it's brown even. It's like light brown. And I love it. And I feel so light. And mm. yeah, it's inconvenient every now and then to get our family from A to B. Every now and then. But we just take two cars if we have to. Um, I was test driving a, a Ford Expedition. and. I really wanted it, you guys. I've always wanted a big fat SUV. It would be so convenient, but it would literally rot in my driveway, mm -hmm. like for the times that it would be convenient. So these are just, we're just wanting to walk you through some of the reasons that we were able to make decisions for our families that, you know, don't look cool from the outside. Yeah. Like I wish I could have a beautiful car in my driveway, but literally just for the aesthetic of it. Yeah. That's crazy to make that decision when my financial goals do not align with that decision right now. Yeah. I mean, I remember when we were trying to choose between the truck and um, this, this tracks, I remember Mondo's family, Mondo's family, all, they all have trucks. His, yeah. they all have trucks and they don't haul either, by the way, <laughs> but they were like, why wouldn't you get a truck? Why are you getting that small car? Why aren't you getting a truck? And we had to like, we didn't have to, but we were like, we don't need a truck. There's, it, it, it makes no sense for us, not only financially, but like in day-to-day -day life, it makes no sense for us. And we could not get them to understand why we were making a different choice than they made. I mean, it was the peer pressure to get a car that is like the souped up, whatever is so strong. It is so, whether they're saying it out loud or not, the peer pressure to do that is so strong. Um, and sometimes it just feels better to be like, okay, I got a truck. Are you happy? Like we're all driving the same thing now. But for us, I just have to tell you, I would be sitting here today stressed out of my mind trying to make a truck payment when we didn't even need it or really want it. Right. Peer pressure is the word. That is such a good word because it, I felt peer pressure and I used to be worried what people would think about me driving that garbage truck to and from daycare and, you know, like any, anywhere. And I, I really don't care anymore. I literally couldn't care less because I know that it isn't actually a reflection of our financial situation. It right. isn't a reflection of me. And those are the things that if we're all being honest with ourselves are why we want the big, fat, beautiful yeah. vehicle. It's for what the, the symbol what is the word I'm looking for? Status. Like the social status. status. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
it's a social status. And I, I know I've seen, you've probably all heard, but rich people, like truly wealthy people are all driving like Hondas mm -hmm. and, you know, they're never driving the fancy cars. They've done studies on it. And it's the wealthiest people that drive the most practical vehicles because they know that it's just a, um, a bad debt at right. the end of the day. So there is a world in which you can have the vehicle that makes sense for your family that still makes you happy because you can still buy things that make you happy. You can still spend a little extra on a car. We're not telling you not to, yep. but is it in alignment with the goals that you have today for your financial future? That's the question that only you can decide for yourself, for what makes sense for your family, what makes sense for the season that you're currently in. And that's the message we wanted to drive home today for you just to start thinking a little differently when it comes to purchasing vehicles and taking on that big, you know, top three expense on your budget. We would love to know what you think. Um, come to our DMs. And even if you are totally like, this is the worst episode I've ever heard. <laughs> I disagree with you wholeheartedly. Please come tell us. We want to know what your thoughts are. We want to know what your takeaways are. We want to know what you think, how you make decisions about cars or big purchases. Um, we are here to have actual conversations. So come to our DMs and talk to us. See you over on Instagram. <laughs>